Hello, everyone. My name is James Blair, and this is probably going to be the weirdest thing that you'll see today. I'm going to talk about testing container applications with a new system that I've created called Cogate. Cogate is end-to-end -end testing for container-based applications. And the idea is that when you open a pull request on GitHub, Cogate will build your images, create an ephemeral Kubernetes environment, and deploy your application, run any tests that you have, merge the changes when, in, when you approve them, and after they merge, publish new images. So uh, if you're familiar with Zool, uh, this is very similar to what Zool does, but it is targeted very narrowly to Kubernetes applications, and it does a, does a lot of stuff behind the scenes for, uh, to make this easy for you. So it uses uh, Zool to do speculative image builds, create speculative test environments, uh, project gating, and uh, it has the, the fabulous auto hold feature, which if you've been here for the previous talk, then you've learned all about. Uh, auto holds let you not only uh, log into a Kubernetes cluster to debug your application, but uh, in this case, you can use them as preview environments. So if you want to uh, see what your application looks like, then you can have Cogate deployment and deploy it in one of these ephemeral Kubernetes clusters, and then um, uh, use the auto hold, hold to preview what it's going to look and function like. So what are speculative builds? These are container builds that depend on unmerged changes in other projects. So let's say that you have container images um, that uh, for your application, and those container images are based on other container images. For instance, you might have a base image that you use for all of your images, and then from that base image, you build on top of it. So with Cogate, not only can you, uh, when you open a pull request, can you say, build this container image with this pull request, you can actually have that pull request depend on another pull request, possibly even in another repository, and Cogate will not only speculatively build your container image for the pull request that you're opening, but any that it depends on as well. Um, there's really no limit to how deep this rabbit hole goes. Uh, speculative test environments. So once we've built these images, Cogate is going to uh, spin up a Kubernetes. It's going to deploy the images that it just built. Um, Again, these changes aren't even merged yet, uh, but it's going to use whatever deployment methodology you tell it to 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 deploy your to deploy and run your app, um, and then run any tests that it needs to, uh, and then destroy the cluster at the end of this process. When you put all these things together, you get something that we call project gating, and this is uh, when you take a change that is uh, a change to your application, you want to test it and then automatically have it merge as soon as it passes tests. So basically, you can open up a GitHub pull request, review it, um, say this looks good to me, and then uh, Cogate is going to uh, deploy your application with it, test it, and if it passes tests, then automatically merge it. The auto holds feature that I mentioned earlier, um, like I said, you can use that deployment um, as an interactive preview environment or use it to diagnose failures. So I'm going to show you a little bit of what Cogate looks like. Um, it's not a, a, a full demo, um, but it's a, a pretty, it's a, a lightning talk walkthrough for, uh, so you can get an idea of, of how, what this is and how it works. So um, you can uh, log in with an email address or, of course, log in with GitHub. Um, so it integrates with everything that you've got there. Um, once you've logged in, uh, this is uh, the list of projects that it has access to. You can fairly easily turn it on and off for any of your GitHub projects. Um, you can also, uh, You'll notice there's a branches column there. Uh, you can tell it what branches to act on. So it can act on all of the branches, or you can tell it to only deal with protected branches. Um, this is sort of depending on your workflow, whether you use the, the protected branch workflow or, or not. Um, you, you, you can set that there. 
Um, so for this example, what I have here is a, um, an application, uh, a very simple application that has uh, two container images, and they're in two different repos. Uh, the, the application is a calculator, and it's a client-server-based calculator, because of course, I mean, why wouldn't you use a client-server calculator? So there's a calculator server and a calculator client. Um, the client just does an, uh, a REST call to the server to do arithmetic, right? So um, the first thing that we need to do is uh, take a look at our calculator server app and tell Cogate to build an image. Um, this is all it takes to, uh, to do that. There are some other options if you need them, but uh, if, if your repo has a Docker file in it, then um, if you add this cogate.yaml to it, this is all you need to do to tell cogate, like build, build this repo into an image that is um, called calculator server. Um, oh, yeah, I made that bigger so it's easy for you to read, sorry. So once you um, add this file and open up a pull request for it, Cogate is going to immediately start uh, building it. So this is this is something uh, I don't know. I think it's pretty neat. Um, basically, any changes that you make to Cogate configuration, um, they don't have to merge before it start uses it starts using them. So uh, you can just propose this change, and Cogate will build an image for it. And um, going back to the Cogate interface, that's what this looks like. Here's the, the build result. You can see up there that, uh, that it, it knows that it built the Docker, uh, the Docker Hub calculator server um, image with the latest tag. And uh, if you want, you can click on the view logs button and, and see the build logs. Uh, but that's, you know what those look like. So um, the next thing that we need to do is uh, add our second image. So we, we added the calculator server image before. Now we're gonna switch to the other repo and, and tell it to build the calculator client image. We also need to tell it to how to actually deploy this application. So um, I'm gonna remember that I have a zoomed in version this time. So this is the Cogate YAML file for the calculator client repo. You can see that we define the image there at the top. Um, so that's just like the calculator server. And then underneath that, we define our deployment. So this is where most of the magic happens. Um, within that deployment, we tell it what images that we use. So we're gonna tell it that we need the calculator client and the calculator server image. And Cogate is going to use that so that whenever you make a change that causes e either of these images to be built, it knows that it's going to need to, to run this deployment. Um, then we tell it what kind of platform we need. So uh, this can run on, on a single node Kubernetes cluster. So uh, the platform here is Kubernetes one node. Um, uh, over time, Cogate will grow any number of different platforms. Um, it's pretty simple right now. We're kind of like in a beta test phase, um, but we're gonna get multi-node Kubernetes systems. We could use uh, uh, EKS, AKS, GKS, all the all the KSs. Um, uh, and then we tell Cogate how to actually deploy it. So in this case, um, we're, we're telling it to run kubectl apply. So we're just gonna, kube, you can deploy this app by doing kubectl apply deploy.yaml. And um, then we tell it what, so Cogate expects something to run. Um, that thing needs to uh, uh, not only deploy the application, but also do some kind of evaluation and return success or failure for, for whether this works or not. And so we, we, as part of the deployment, we have a job that actually does some, some arithmetic, and uh, that job then, uh, we just need to wait for that to complete. So um, there's other methods of application. Uh, in, instead of doing kubectl apply, you could also um, use a, uh, you can use customize, you could um, create uh, what we call uh, an action container. So that's basically, in this instance, that would be a third image that gets built, 
and and inside of that image is all of your deployment code. So um, you know, if you wanted to run Helm or something like that, then what you would do is build an image that runs your Helm charts. Um, so with the the concept of an action container, it's very powerful. You can basically do anything um, that way. So this is what our deployment build looks like. Um, it's a little bit different than uh, than the image builds. Um, you you can see that not only uh, it, it tells you which image builds were used, um, and not only can you see the logs, but uh, down here at the bottom of the page, we actually have, um, and uh, Cogate has an understanding of what resources existed in the cluster during the job. So um, we've got a little card up there for each of those resources. So it's pretty easy to just um, click on any of those and get a get basically the equivalent of a uh, kubectl describe or or something like that, right? So here's a here's uh, what happens if you click on the info icon for the deployment. Um, you get the kubectl describe for that. Um, so you can see all of these Kubernetes resources. You can see all of the logs um, very easily just from the the web interface. Um, here's our uh, our pod that actually ran the arith arithmetic, right? Um, so uh, these are these are the logs from from uh, our calculator server doing uh, adding one plus four. So um, it's really easy to see the the, the results of the build that way. Um, so let's see. That's um, That seems duplicative. Uh, oh, so uh, auto holds. So um, if you uh, if you set an auto hold for um, that's what this is showing. There's a little hold. So if you if you flip the hold switch on the uh, on the build, um, then you're telling uh, Cogate that you want an auto hold. For, you you want to hold the end of this build. Um, and so once it completes. Um, not only do you have all the things that I showed you before, but um, there's a button there that says cube config, and if you click on that, then it will um, show you the, the cube config for that cluster. So you can copy and paste that to your local environment and then start running kubectl commands on it uh, and, uh, and, and have at it, do whatever you want with the cluster. And then when you're done, um, you can just hit the delete hold button and it'll release the cluster back. and. and uh, from whence it came. So uh, that's the quick demo for Cogate. So um, feel free to take a look at the website. It's got a sort of tutorial walkthrough um, based on this calculator client server thing. So you can kind of get hands on with it pretty easily. Um, and like I said, this is, this is very new. Um, consider it in beta and please uh, let me know if you have any questions or um, it's not quite working out for you, you need to do something else. I'm very open to feedback, so um, my email address is up there too. Uh, and I've got a little uh, pamphlet here uh, that you can take uh, as well. So thank you very much. <laughs>